friends, Laura A. Grace here, the author of Dear Author, Letters from a Bookish Fangirl, Team Lines of Poetry Collection, and Finding God Anime Devotional for Tokus, which is free on a variety of platforms. I'll leave a link down below in case if you'd like to check it out. Happy Friday, my friends. I'm so, so excited for this video. It is another 25 days of manga. But you guys know, usually on Fridays, I post video reviews or some manga shenanigans. And oh my goodness, I am just so excited to be sharing this video review. I have talked about it, I feel like, pretty often during like my top five Wednesday videos, or maybe not often but I feel like it was like a waker up or like when I did the yummy food top five Wednesday video saying how I was so behind on my TBR and that like I had had this manga on my shelf for like weeks at this point. I know I mean it's had been over a month that I've had this manga on like checkout from my library and so I finally actually like sat down and read it. I was like okay I've got to put my IQ on hold just temporarily so I can read this series because it is bothering me because I read a little bit of it, loved it, and I'm like I need to finish it. So I am dedicating this video review today to Marg and Marg Reads Manga because she was the one that actually got me interested and really curious about this. She has a, I don't know if she has a review on her Instagram, but I'll leave a link down below if you like to check it out. She has such gorgeous photos and she reads awesome manga. Like she's always like adding things to my TBR probably without even realizing that's what she's doing. So, which is never a bad thing. You know how reader, reading reader friends are that they're always adding to our TBR. So with all of that ramble said, the manga title that I am reviewing today is is Giant Spider and Me and is I think like the subtitle is a post apocalyptic tale which I cannot say for whatever reason so sorry if I just said that wrong I feel like I did but it is such a sweet and beautiful story about friendship absolutely loved it it was so cute I know I already said that but I just oh my goodness, like I was like in my feels at the end of this series, like each one is just so, so beautiful. But if you're not familiar of what Giant Spider and Me is about, it is about the main character right here, Nagi. And she is a young woman, I believe she's 12. And she lives in this town. Well, she actually lives far from town. She lives sort of like on a mountain. And she lives by herself. Her father is no longer with her, which you do find out like, where, but like, about her father, I should say. But she lives alone, and one day she ventures out to go get some food, I believe, like to collect something from the forest. And she runs into this huge spider, and she's pretty like terrified, because I mean, look, he's like ginormous. And the interesting thing is, is that he did not harm her. In fact, they became friends. She made some food for him, and or a dish for him. And after that, yeah, they just had this beautiful friendship that slowly unfolded, and it just continued continues to grow as the manga series progresses and it honestly just gets better and better. I love their friendship and with the friendship aspect what's really cool too about this manga is that it has like recipes like low-key recipes and that it's part of this story where it's teaching you how to cook like this recipe but it's not like what's a good example here I feel like it's not like an infomercial where like oh this is great you're being entertained and then bam, you're suddenly hit, hit with like, here's how to cook. No, it really is a natural weaving in. Nagi loves to cook and I love the few memories flashbacks that we have of her and her father of when she shares about like how she feels about like cooking and such. And it's just that aspect of it is so beautiful. I really, really enjoyed it. Though I feel like out of all the manga titles I've read, this one made me the most hungry. I mean, I've read Kamomo Can Fissury, have a link here. That is another title that I mentioned in the yummy food, but I'm not a huge sweets person. So I feel like if I read titles that have a focus on candy, or just sweets in general, I'm okay. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, like I said, not a huge sweets fan, but this one had actual food dishes. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, my mouth is watering. I need to go eat. Like, I think I grabbed a snack at least in every volume. I mean, it's three volumes long, but still like I got hungry, like super hungry. But let's talk about Nagi, our, like I said, our main girl here. I absolutely loved her. I felt that there was a lot of re relatability to her from the 
from the very beginning, to be honest, like you see her longing and her missing her father and just how that leads to her meeting the spider and their friendship beginning. Like it, the Monica did such a great job of making that feel real because when I was reading, my nine-year-old was like, mom, like how could she think that this giant spider is cute? <laughs> and I honestly never would have imagined I would think that this giant spider is cute whatsoever. And, but I did. And the Monica makes it work. What would sound sort of like a scary or like weird premise Yes, I mean, and however you want to say it, like, as a whole, yes, it does sound sort of weird. But when you get reading, you're like, this is a really moving story. And I thought it funny that I think at the back of volume one, the mangaka mentions <laughs> about how she talked with her editor about potentially making uh, Asa, is the spider's name, scary. And I'm glad that she did. I'm glad that they went with a much cuter little version because, like, look, he has leaves on his back or like, I don't know what this would be called for like spider terminology, but I loved it. It really just gave, and there's a little bit too, you can see a little bit more of that grass or well, like leaves, not grass, but it works. And I felt attached to Asa and I felt attached to the friendship that him and Nagi form. And like, I love the little bit of word building that we get in this story. No, there's not a lot, but I I was really pretty amazed, to be honest, of how the Monica wove it in. Very subtle. I mean, you find out that the city has been completely submerged underwater, and that is their world. Everybody else has gone to, like, valleys and to mountains, and they built their own village, their own towns to live and thrive and survive. And I found that very fascinating because even though I said that it's very low key, I felt like it still gave a grounding to this world and that this is a real kind of world. Now when we meet Asa here, there isn't much to say about him, but I do like how curious he is. It, just another thing that adds to him being super cute. And let me go to volume one. When you first sort of like I feel like really start to like Asa. It is when food is involved and it was just, oh my goodness, it was so, so cute. Here we go. Here's a non little spoiler scene. But look at him. Look at the little hearts. It's so, I mean, he's just so precious. And they, we have those kind of little scenes like that more than once that just, just make you go, oh, like this little giant spider is so cute. I said little, but this giant spider is so cute. Like, like really, like you, you feel this attachment and this bond to this giant spider. And like I said, Tanagi and this whole, like the back says here, like for the little, I don't even know what it'd be like, oh, you could tell I did not get much sleep last night, but a web of friendship and that this story at the heart of it really is a beautiful and thriving story of friendship. And that whole volume is really just it building and it growing and them trusting each other. Because when you get to volume two, wow, I didn't think it would get like intense as it did in volume two whatsoever. But you meet more people, you meet new people. In fact, one of my favorite characters actually pops up at the end of volume one, but you don't really actually meet them until the beginning of volume two. And each like volumes one and volume two sort of end with a little bit of a cliffhanger. So definitely have the whole series on hand because I was pretty shocked how volume one ended. I did not expect that. And volume two picks up right where volume one ends. And that tension that was at the end of volume one basically continues to keep growing as volume two like progresses. And I was not prepared for that. But you see more of this friendship in a different way. And this is sort of the volume where Nagi has to face the reality of this situation of you have a giant spider, like you were a 12 year old girl, this giant spider could eat you for crying out loud. And so she has to face different obstacles, even if they're small obstacles, she still has to face them and the reality of that. And I love how she handles that. I, I found her even more relatable because I wouldn't say that she struggles per se, but I think she might struggle in the sense of the pressure and the outer voices that are coming at her 
very loud. And that is where my favorite character comes in. Her name is Belle. And oh my goodness, she is a hoot. She is a hoot. I feel like there's a little bit of mystery surrounding her. If you've read it, you know what I mean. But I still really <laughs> liked her a lot. She's just funny. And I feel like she is the perfect like companion, so to speak, to Nagi because she's very, very much opposite. And where Nagi is quiet, Belle is loud, very confrontational, and not afraid to get in your face. And Nagi needs that. And I just, I really like that. Plus, Belle is funny in the sense of the food aspect of things. Like, she just... She just loves food. And so that, of course, plays another role with the cooking and whatnot with Nagi. And I think in every chapter, when I think about it, it has a recipe. And again, it's woven in so beautifully. I mean, you're seeing the unfolding. And Nagi may not be the only one that's cooking in every chapter, but you do get those recipes and they even show you how much is required of that ingredient right here. So this was cream stew. And then it'll tell you like how many grams of what was used of each item. And before that, it's showing you like how that the person, or in this case for this chapter, how Nagi is cooking it. And there's Belle right there. You can see her, there she is. Yeah. Oh, and she's also on the back right here as well. So it, the food aspect was great. Oh, yes. And I forgot flipping through. You meet another character like you meet quite a bit of human characters in this volume. And there's a good tension, great discussion. In fact, I took a picture of one of the pages and I will leave it up here because it just really resonated with me. And I love how Nagi was asked that and how she answers that question. It was excellent, so good, and just keeps going to the end. And so I liked the guy that we meet at the end. I cannot remember his name for nothing. In fact, I was trying to think if he ever does say his name, but this is this guy right here. This is one of the guys that you meet. And I liked him. He's just different. And all the humans obviously are different when I say that. But I don't know. I liked how he added a different dynamics to the actual manga itself. And he's just quirky. I think that's the, 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 the biggest thing is he is a quirky person. And I will say again, with the end of volume two, it is a cliffhanger. You definitely need volume three. In fact, I didn't think that the like series could get any more intense than it did in volume two, but I was wrong. When I read volume three, it was even more intense. And in fact, there is a character, I will not say who it is because of spoilers, I loved the growth that he shows in this volume. Like, I was extremely impressed. I did not think there would be a realistic way in what feels like a short amount of time to help this character overcome some personal views that they have of somebody else in the manga and sort of rise up over that. Like, I just did not expect that. I, I just didn't. I, I was caught off guard by that, but I really love that. And there is just more intensity, not because of the situation that is unfolding, but because there's something that happens invol in involving Asa. I was pretty like, oh my goodness, like, what is the manga doing? Like, why are we going down this route? Like, what is happening? And this just solidifies and just, yeah, it just solidifies Nagi and Asa's friendship. And it's just so beautiful. In fact, I was surprised that we have a little bit of a Christmas vibe that's going on or that went on in this manga. And I just, I loved it. I, I really did like, in fact, this was the perfect time I feel like to read this series because it has this Thanksgiving vibe combined with this Christmas vibe and it ends so perfectly. I mean, I had tears just in my eyes at the end. I wouldn't say I cried, but it was it was very heart moving and it was the perfect way to end this story. It was so beautiful and I just really loved the beginning journey to the end. Like there's just literally nothing bad I could say about. Like when I think of like a perfect ending, it's that. It is that, I mean, it captures your heart and it just brings all of the elements that you're wanting and didn't realize how you wanted it. And boom, it's there, it's there. In fact, it inspired me to want to write a Christmas post actually about the Christmas theme that takes place in this manga. And I will leave a link down below. I'm not sure if it's live yet as of like filming this video and it going up, but I'll definitely leave a link down below when it's ready. I just 
I loved it. It, it was it was so moving. And this really is a great cozy manga, one that has all of the cooking vibes. And then it has that sense of belonging and that family, like found family. And that is just such a beautiful trope to read around this time of the year. I mean, any time of the year, really. But I definitely feel like around the holidays the, that, you know, families are gathering and we're wanting that sense of family, especially if we don't have it. And Nagi brings that. So all in all, I highly recommend checking out Giant Spider and Me if you have not read it. It's a short series, only three volumes. I do not know if it is out of like stock or anything or how hard it is to get this series. But if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. It's it's just beautiful. It, it, like I said, it is definitely a cozy, post-contemporary kind of story kind of thing with a giant spider that's really not that scary, though it does have scary moments, okay? I'm, I'm definitely not gonna say it doesn't have that because it will leave you like, oh my goodness. <laughs> But it is great. All the friendship, all the found family, and the cooking, the recipes, and just this beautiful, beautiful ending that will just make you feel loved as a reader. Have you guys read this? Let me know in the comments if you have. I would love to hear from you. And if you have or if you haven't, could you picture yourself being friends with a giant spider like Asa, who's just absolutely adorable? He's just so cute. He's so cute. Let me know, though. Do you think you guys could do it? Especially... I said, yeah, if it was awesome. I don't know about if it wasn't awesome. <laughs> yes, is really nice and friendly. So yes, let me know below, friends. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and have a great day. Bye.